This is uh, diffraction and resolution part two, in which I'll be focusing on the single slit. So let us start with a question. Imagine holding a circular disk in a beam of monochromatic light. If diffraction occurs at the edge of the disk, disk, what will the center of the shadow be? Please pause the video and think about your answer, or even better, I hope that you're G-chatting or on the phone with somebody else in the class as you go through this. Uh, pick your answer, discuss what your answer is with each other, then try to go through your reasoning. The correct answer happens to be a bright spot, and part of the reasoning that can help you get to why is that all paths around the solid disk are going to go exactly the same distance in order to reach the center of the shadow beneath the disk. So if all paths around the outside are going exactly the same distance, they're going to all arrive in phase with each other. This would not be true, by the way, if the disk were not circular. For example, if it was oval, you would not see this effect. There are two different types of diffraction. There's one called Fraunhofer, which is far field, where light has had time to spread and fully inter intermingle. And there's one called Fresnel diffraction, which is near field. Fresnel diffraction can be turned into Fraunhofer diffraction through the use of a lens or two. Ideally, this is what you want to do if you're working in microscopy. This lecture will be entirely about Fraunhofer. Diffraction. We will not be touching on Fresnel at all. Okay. Back to the lecture. Imagine a single slit. Light goes through the slit, has time to spread out. And I call the side of the slit A. And here I'm using the narrowest dimension of the slit as A. And I'm going to call the distance in between the slit and the screen B. Using the Poisson spot. Uh, example that we just did as your guide, I would like you to address this question. Will the spot directly opposite the slit on the screen be light or dark? Pause, think it over. All right, the spot directly opposite the screen will indeed be light uh, because the path links on either side of the slit are going to have the same amount of time to travel would be one way to get at the answer. All right, so in class, I did a derivation of how to find the minima associated with the single slit diffraction. I am not going to repeat that. It was a kind of a proof by induction. It's long, it's not necessary. Just cut to the chase. The minima are found at A, sine theta equals m times lambda. Notice that this is really similar to the formula for constructive interference in a two or multi-slit system. Do not be 
led astray by the similarity in between the formulas. This is for finding destructive interference in single swim. Let's take a look at the kind of pattern that's generated. Viewing it in more detail. So I'm going to again, like I did with two slip diffraction, use the variable x to indicate my position on the screen above or below the spot directly opposite the slit. And here we see that this is very bright in the middle. And then it goes to a minimum. And then much dimmer and much dimmer. In fact, this lobe only adds 4.5% of the total light. And so this lobe here in the middle has almost 90% of the total amount of light that's created in the pattern. That means it has most of the information. Like our eyes are basically single slits. They're round, but they're single slits. So, well, anyway, I apologize. Uh, so because the central peak has 90% of the information that's present for the system, it needs to be specially considered as the most important part of the pattern. If these are, if this pattern is falling on your rods and your cones, they're barely going to register these lobes, but they're going to trigger very strongly on this one. Let's think more about single slit as I by looking at some eyes that are actually somewhat similar to slits. So before we get to the eyes, the diffraction pattern low below rises from a single slit, what would sharpen the pattern? What would make the central bright spot narrower? Would it happen if the slit was narrowed, widened? If we enlarge the screen, if we covered the slit? So think about this. The answer is somewhat counterintuitive. Look at the formula you just wrote down. Sharpening the pattern would mean what for theta? And then how would theta and A have to change relationships to each other in order to achieve that result? And the really counterintuitive answer, for me at least, uh, when I first started studying physics, is that making the slit wider makes the pattern sharper. Now let's look at two eyes, a goat's eye and a cat's eye. So the goat has an eye that is a horizontal slit. slit. And the eye, the cat, has an eye that is a vertical slit. 
Now take a moment to absorb this question. Can the cat see better up, down? The goat can see better right, left. Can the cat resolve better right, left? Can the goat can see better up, down? They both resolve equally well in both directions. I hope you've thought about it. Let's go back to the eyes for a moment. So the goat can really see much better to its right and to its left than it can either above it or below it. The width of the slit matters and it is widest in that dimension. And the cat can really see much better above and below it than it can uh, either to the right or to the left. Presumably this has an evolutionary pressure to do with driving the cat to be better at making leaps and catching prey and perhaps the goat has over the eons uh, had a little bit more survivability if it can have vision around and avoid predators. I don't know. Okay. Next and last lecture will be resolution.